So you bought a new house or condo and now what? Well today in this video we're going to tell you now what. So let's get to it right now. So guys as I mentioned today we're going to tell you exactly what you should do as soon as you buy a new house or a condo. I mean everybody goes through it. We get that question all the time. Now that I bought, now what do I do? Well today we're going to tell you what you should do. I have the expert here. Aileen is an absolute expert when it comes to this kind of stuff. So Aileen's going to tell us exactly what we should do once we buy a new home or a condo and Aileen take it away. All right, so um, very, very crucial steps uh, there at the very end, right, leading up to closing and then just beyond closing. So we're gonna talk about that. So there's, you're saying there's actually some things you need to do before you close. There's there's a couple key things that I wanna make sure you know to do just before closing. Gotcha, so, yeah. okay. So the first thing is uh, your final walkthrough. Um, that is obviously an important thing, but here's the key majority of our clients, they're not down here, they close remotely, so they're not here to do their final walkthrough. So what we do is we go in and we actually perform the final walkthrough for them, and we go through, we video the entire walkthrough that we can then send the client so the client can remotely watch the video, approve the final walkthrough, and you know, have, have know that everything that is supposed to be there is there. The property is really important when you're buying a condo because uh, the personal property is conveying with the sale, but it's also very important in, um, in any purchase. So, so wear your boots on the ground. Absolutely. Um, if it's new construction, then sometimes we actually do the first walk and the final walk for the client if they can't come in town. Uh, we really would like for them to be at one or the other, but if you can't be in, in sometimes busy schedules, you guys, you're buying an investment property and you just can't get down here for that first walk or that final walk, and we actually do that for you too. Huge, very, very important, especially when you're doing a new construction first walk because you're identifying everything that you want the builder to address uh, prior to closing. Um, because once you close and you've done that final walkthrough, then it kind of really becomes a warranty item unless it's something that they said that they were going to do and they just need a few extra days past closing to do it. That's fine. But you definitely want it in writing, written out what they're going to do. And we've so, actually done a video on a, yeah. a couple of those, but you can check out the video here. One of the walkthroughs we did for new construction in the Gulf Shores area. And then we have another video where we did one for the somersault. somersault so yeah, trees, absolutely. Yeah. But. Um, so in addition to that, prior to closing, and this is important because the title company a lot of times arranges this, but sometimes they forget. And this is important to make sure that the seller is giving you all of their keys, garage door openers. If it's a condo, you need parking passes, pool passes, owner's closet keys, and sometimes there's even mailbox keys on site at the condo complex, which is only important if you have a snowbird but um, or you're planning to move into the uh, condo yourself. But those are important things, I mean, because that owner's closet you normally don't have access to during the inspection period because it's the owner's uh, personal property. But a lot of times they forget that they even have those keys. So what the title company needs to do is arrange to make sure that those keys are mailed in or brought into closing so that you can get those at closing. And if that's not done, then you've either got to get the locks changed or then you're trying to, after closing, um, get those keys. And you don't want to do that. So be sure to get that done prior to closing. Uh, and a lot of times I'll have, the owner's closet will have extra paint for touch-up paint and things like that. Yeah, um, there's usually all kinds of goodies in there. Yeah, <laughs> so now the, sometimes they come down and take all their stuff out, but they'll leave the paint. So. Yeah. Um, all right, so the other really important thing to do right after you close, um, you don't get your deed at closing because the title company is going to take that deed for you and they're going to go record it. Um, so you actually get the original deed in the mail after closing. But once it's been recorded, you should be able to go down to the tax office and file for homestead exemption if it's going to be your primary residence. Very, very important. Even if it's a second home, you're going to want to make sure you get it classified as a second home. Otherwise, they are going to tax you at an investment rate. So, unless, And if it is an investment property, that's fine. But if not... 
Um, the other thing is, is you still want to make sure that you contact the, the probate office and, and have all the information updated on that property. Otherwise, when the tax bill comes out October 1st, it's going to go to the previous owner. So our taxes are, uh, the tax bill comes out October 1st and is due October 1st, and it's delinquent December 31st. So you want to make sure you get that done, especially if it's not escrowed with your um, mortgage company. Even if it is escrowed with your mortgage company, you need to check with the mortgage company to make sure that they're paying the tax bill. Because sometimes, like initially when you get the loan, that the company that does the loan initially may not have your loan at the time. They may sell that loan off. So you got to make sure that whoever they sold it to actually knows that your insurance and your, your in, a lot of times your insurance and your taxes are being escorted in and make sure that they have it scheduled to have that go out. And you can pay that property tax bill online. <clears throat> so if you go in to go pay it online, it'll show if it's already been paid. So it's an easy way to just double check and make yeah. sure it's been paid. And if you do, and if it hasn't been paid, then you want to make sure it gets paid by December thirty first. So there are uh, some other things. If, if you are filing for homestead exemption, there are some ex uh, additional exemptions. Like uh, if you're over sixty five, if you have a disability, if you are blind, if you uh, are a, a, a vet, disabled vet, active military. So there's a number of additional exemptions that you can get um, if you're homesteading your property. So very important because you want to save that money if you can. But in general, even if you don't have any exemptions, Alabama, I think, has like, the second lowest property tax rates in the country. In the country, yeah. So, I mean, people all the time are like, well, what are the property taxes going to be on that? And we're talking, these are investors calling. And I'll tell them and they're like, What? They're like, it's three times that in Florida. I'm like, I know. Like, that's yeah. why it's a huge advantage to be in Alabama. Um, and, and listen, sometimes we'll put the link below in the description that will tell you about the exemptions for the tax rate and all that kind of good stuff. But sometimes that thing can be clear as mud. So you might want to just contact us if you're unclear about something or if you just want our guidance. Because we, this is, you might buy you know, maybe two, three, maybe even just one property in your entire life. But we do this a lot every month. <laughs> so, I mean, we know exactly what to do and who to tell you to contact and, and everything. We've got all that information. So all you got to do is pick up that phone and call us and we'll take care of everything for you. We will guide you in the right direction. So, but yeah, I get that question a lot, especially from out of state um, buyers, and they'll say, you know, what, what should I expect on my property taxes? And when I tell them, they normally ask me if that is per month. And when I tell them, no, that would be your annual tax bill, they're like, oh my goodness. Like yeah. they're just like flabbergasted. Well, for an example, I just had a lady move here from California, and she was telling me that we were talking about the property tax and her property taxes were on the particular house she bought were like $1,100. And she said, Oh my gosh, per month, that's really good. And I said, no, 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 that that's per year. And she said the same type of house, same value property she had in California was $15,000 a year, $15,000 a year. So yeah. Anyway. Yeah. So yeah, so enough. she so eleven hundred was still good per month to her. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> <For her. laughs> uh, and last tip on the property tax bill is um when you close, if you do not update the information on that property with the probate office, that tax bill when it comes out and gets delivered October first, is gonna go to the previous owner. So you will not get a copy of it unless you call and get that updated. So you wanna do that. All right, so after closing, there are still some really key things that you're going to want to know. And one of the big ones, especially if you have bought new construction or you have bought a property that's got some new appliances in it, like a new air conditioner, a new refrigerator, whatever, register with the manufacturer for the warranty. And this is super important on air conditionings. So, you know, the, a brand new air conditioner will come with an extended 10-year warranty. However, that last five years does not transfer. 
So if it's a new construction property, you definitely want to make sure you get it registered as quickly as possible because they do, uh, that five-year warranty will remain, but if you don't do it within 60 days, you will lose that extra five years on the 10-year warranty. Also, if you are going to go to, like if you sold the house and it was still under warranty, that extra five years will not transfer. However, my air conditioning guy told yeah, me we know a little trick, trick so. around <laughs> that. So. All you got to do is call us and yeah. we'll tell you what the yeah. trick so, is. Anyway. <laughs> um, but anyway, very important. Go ahead and make sure you have all those warranties um, registered with the manufacturer. So. Also on your AC, and this is really important, if you're moving here from away and you don't know this, you do need to pour vinegar down your drain every month and change your air filter every month because our AC units, they, they get worked pretty hard. Now that's the sometime. drain for the air conditioner. Correct. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Cause if it, not, not the drain in your sink, not, not because listen, that's a whole other, that's that's a whole whole other, other thing. thing. Yeah. Because it's your grinder pump. yeah, every place down here has a grinder pump. So and we were told a little trick about, yeah. um, not too long ago. The guy was telling us a, a kind of a trick that you can trick the grinder pump into clearing itself. I didn't know how a grinder pump works, but he explained to me basically what it does is it waits. It, it doesn't run until it builds up to a right. certain it's point. It's got a float switch in it there. It has a float and then it, then, it, then it cuts on, churns everything up and, and flushes it out. It out. Right. Well, the way to trick it, he said, and he said a, about once a month or maybe once every two months, he said, take an entire bottle of Dawn dishwashing right. detergent and just pour it down your drain with hot water. And he said, and just continuously pour it down there. What it'll do is it will create all these suds in your, in the grinder pump tank and it'll cause that float to come up and it kicks it on and causes it to, to release everything out. So it's a good little trick to clean it out. So he said about once a month, maybe once every two months, just pour that dawn down there and, and don't ever pour grease down your drain, ever. Don't ever pour you grease. You really, um, down here with the grinder pumps, <clears throat> you don't want to put anything down your drain or toilet other than actual toilet paper because it's an actual pump and you can tear that pump up. Yes. And that pump is thousands of dollars. Um, but yeah, you, you know, and, and if you, they normally recommend that you have them cleaned annually and that's like, you know, two, two, three hundred dollars. So Andy's little trick will save you some good money. Um, also, if you bought a condo, uh, you're going to want to make sure that your rental management company handles that uh, monthly maintenance of your AC unit because that AC unit will definitely be getting worked by your renters uh, all summer long. So, next very important thing, if you bought a condo or rental property, you are going to need to get a business license in the city that you bought the property in. And this goes for every single property that you have. I have a couple rental properties in Orange Beach and I have a business license for each one. So that's just so, important. So <laughs> let me clarify this. So what she's saying is if you have, let's say you own a, a condo at Phoenix 10 and then you decide to contact us and buy another one at Phoenix 10. Well, then you're going to have to have a business license for each individual unit. You have to have a separate license for each unit. Okay. So if you own 10 of them, you got to have 10 business licenses. So that was something that I learned basically the hard way because I had a client, I was not aware of that. And I had a client who bought two properties in there and they thought they could list them under one business license, but it turns out you have to have a business license for each one. Now they're not expensive, but right. you know, but you still have to maintain one business license per unit. Next thing is, is, is if you bought a house or condo that is in an association, if you bought a condo, you're definitely in an association. If you bought a house that's in, it has an HOA, um, at the time of closing, the title company is going to collect the next month's HOA or condo fee for you and pay the association. Um, also, they will collect your personal information and send that into the association with that payment. Then the association is going to reach out to you, make sure that they have your uh, updated information, or they may just actually send you the next bill in the mail. You'll receive that, and then you'll start paying that for. But that allows you a little bit of time post closing. You don't have to worry about like, oh, well, it's it's uh, March twentieth. I've got to make sure the HOA fee gets paid April first. No, title company, and you should see that on your closing statement. Will collect that April first payment, and they will go ahead and send it to them. So you won't actually make your next payment till 
the following month in May. Uh, if it's quarterly, then uh, they'll probably will collect, um, they'll prorate that particular quarter, um, and then you would still have plenty of time to make the next quarterly payment. So one other little tidbit we have is, um, obviously everybody knows you gotta transfer utilities upon closing. Andy and I actually have a, a, a neat little company that we use called Utility Connect that does arranges all the utility transfers for you. Um, and they don't charge the client anything for that, but it can be a huge hassle-free, you know, a thing to use Utility Connect. Yeah, they literally, I, I'll put the link in the description below, but they literally, it's one phone call and, mm -hmm. and you and everything is connected. So your power, your water, your cable, your internet, your, I mean, everything. I mean, yeah. so they'll literally handle the whole process for you. They'll take down a little information from you and then they handle it from there. So Yeah, and if you're buying a condo, a lot of times you are only having to transfer power and maybe internet. Just depends on what all the dues uh, include, but typically they include just about all utilities but your power. So less to have to do there, but still Utility Connect is, is nice to have if you've got to transfer more than one utility. Yeah, if you're buying a house and then <laughs> you have to connect everything, then you make one phone call versus trying to get in touch with you know, 15 different yeah, places. Yeah, if you're, if you're doing a traditional sale, then you, you know, you have to have that set up the day of closing. But the, the thing is, is a lot of the utilities down here, they want an actual closing statement or a copy of the deed to transfer. So it gets a little tricky. You have to kind of call ahead and make sure that they know that you're going to transfer. Now, if it's new construction, they usually allow three to five days post-closing to get that tra uh, transferred over. So you have a little bit more breathing room there. And if you use us to buy a home, a lot of times we want to go see in the fact that, well, could you please leave the power turned on a Until couple of days, day, you yeah. know, that kind yeah, of thing. So, yeah. but so, we, 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 we watch out for stuff like that, but, yeah. <laughs> but that, you know, that's where you come in calling us. Well, I hope you found these little tidbits helpful. If you are, um, you know, just before closing or just after closing, some, some important things that you do want to actually make sure to be aware of and address so that, uh, you don't run into any pitfalls. So it's a smooth move to our little slice of paradise. Absolutely. Hope you enjoyed this video and until next time, we hope to see you around town. Be sure to watch some of our other videos.